So I'm currently filming this video while I'm stood in a field, but I'm stood in a magnetic field. And you might see that if you've got a compass, what we have is a pointer here points to the magnetic north. The reason for this is that the Earth's core causes there to be this permanent magnetic field, and actually that deflects highly charged particles that come in from the sun, and actually it means that life on Earth can exist. So we are currently in a magnetic field. But we also have a region around certain materials where we have a permanent magnetic field. So this thing here, is a permanent magnet. We've got a north end and a south end, and we can see how this causes other materials to um, become magnetized. In actual fact, if we've got this paper clip, although the paper clip isn't a magnet, it can become magnetized in the magnetic field, and then it experiences a force. So certain materials like iron, steel, nickel, cobalt, these materials can become magnetized, but other things, for example, copper, can't be. And basically, the region around a permanent magnet where another object experiences a force is called a magnetic field. Now, we can actually show the shape of this field because we can't actually see it, but we can show the shape if we were to use some of these iron filings. So I'm just going to sprinkle these around. And what we can see is that these start to align with the magnetic field lines, and it's strongest at the poles of this magnet but we can't really tell which direction that magnetic field is acting. So there's something else that we can use to measure and actually start to plot the magnetic field around one of these permanent magnets. So I'm just gonna hold this slightly to the side so the fields don't interact too much. But we can also use these small compasses here. So this is our kind of compass for navigation, but this compass here is called a plotting compass. And what you can do is use several of these and the small bit inside starts to align with the field line. So if I'm just going to take one of these, what you could do is that uh, you put this plotting compass near to the magnet, and then you maybe mark on the paper behind it the direction that this is pointing in. And what you'll see is that as we go from one end and we go round, that pointer keeps pointing in a certain direction. And actually what we find is that the field lines um, come from the north end they loop around and they go into the south end of that, magnet, of that magnet. So we can actually start to get a sense of the direction of the magnetic field lines by using a plotting compass, but we can also see it just using iron filings that shows the rough shape of that field. And we've got to remember that this is very much a 2D version of that field. The field is also going to be coming out of the paper and so on. So let's have a look at drawing some of the magnetic field lines around a permanent bar magnet. So this is how we can actually draw the field lines around, in this case, a permanent bar magnet. Now, just by convention, we tend to have the north end red and the south end in blue. So that's just a bit of convention. Um, and what we then have are these field lines. Now, this is a 2D representation. You've got to imagine, in reality, this is in three dimensions as well. So we also have field lines coming out, I guess, sort of over the page and into the bottom, and also some will be going into the page. Now, what we do is we always draw these field lines going from north to south. So what I'm going to do is just put on some arrows onto these field lines. And we can see that all of these field lines, they start at the north end, they come around and they go into the south end. They never cross over. And as we get further away from the magnet, the field lines get further apart. And effectively, the strength of the field is shown by how close these field lines are together. Just a bit like contour lines, maybe when you're doing geography, if you've got contour lines close together, we've got a steep hill. Well, basically what we have is over here, we've got a weak field. And at the poles, at the north and the south end, we have these field lines getting close together. And that shows that we have a stronger field at this point. So that's how we can actually represent the field around a permanent bar magnet. So that's a kind of staple thing. But what happens if we're looking at maybe the field between two different magnets? So now we have two separate magnets and we've got the north and the south end pointing to each other. And therefore there's going to be this attractive force between them. So what does the field actually look like? Well, let's kind of model this uh, with these uh, real magnets here. If I just put them there, they're not going to attract too much. Again, to show the direction of that field, we could be using a plotting compass, but I'm just going to use some of these iron filings again, uh, and we can look at the field lines now between them. I think what it's quite clear to see, first of all, is that there's this really strong field between the poles, and actually there's going to be still a field at each end. And it's this region here which is really important. 
What we have actually between them are these sort of parallel lines where the iron filings have lined up. And actually if I was to draw this onto the, the diagram below, what we can do is maybe use our ruler to show that between the poles over here, I'm just going to do three lines. Um, and the lines I'm going to draw, the rulers are nice and straight, and I'm going to make sure that they're evenly spaced. And what this then shows is that we have the same field all the way between these two poles of the magnet. This is what we call a uniform field. And again, I'm just going to put the arrows to show the direction uh, that goes from north to south. In actual fact, I suppose if we were to do the complete diagram, we could show that there's still going to be arrows that go from the north pole here and they loop around to the south end over here. It's a bit like one massive bar magnet in effect. But this is the field pattern that we get between the poles of magnets, especially when they're attracting. So there's some of the field lines around permanent magnets, but sometimes it's more useful to have a magnet that you can turn on and turn off. And what we then have is an electromagnet. An electromagnet is when you've got a conductor, for example, a piece of wire that has a current in it. When that's happening, we then get a magnetic field around the wire, and therefore we have an electromagnet.